Yo, what is up boys and girls, it's Votobit here. I've decided to go back into normal Reaper tips because as most of you probably noticed for the past few uh, weeks I've been publishing YouTube shorts but eventually they didn't take off like I wanted them to um, so I'm going to stick with some regular videos. Not so long, not so short, just like uh, five, seven, eight minutes. I don't really know, depends on the topic, of course. So you can get as much knowledge as you can in a short amount of time. And I don't have to hurry up uh, to put this into a one minute video like I used to uh, with the shorts. Today we are going to talk about DSR. For those of you who don't know, DSR is a plugin that takes out all the sibilance from your recording. No matter if this is speech or this is a vocal, most simply sibilance are pieces of words that sound like S, Z, C and stuff like that. So those really like unpleasant and whistling kind of sounds. Whistling, you know what I mean. So if a DSR sees a sibilant, it's just making it quieter. It doesn't make the whole recording quieter. It just takes out this exact frequency uh, we don't need with this whistling sound. For those of you who are more experienced with plugins, DSR is basically a dynamic EQ. So it's a compressor working only on a certain band, in this case, in the higher register. In Reaper, we have a stock JS DSR. Uh, which looks like that. I'll make it a little bigger. Just to be clear, this is not the simplest DSR you can find on the internet. Actually, it's pretty advanced. You can do uh, many things with it. So if you fear the complexity of uh, JS DSR, you can use, for example, Spitfish. It's a really old but fairly good plugin that will do everything you need as far as DSing is concerned. I will get back to it further in the video, but now let's focus on the JS DSer. So in order to have something to work with, with lots of S's, lots of those sibilants, I will just record a simple sentence. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. Doesn't make any sense, right? Okay, but now we have something to work with. Let's make it bigger. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. And now let's have a look at the DSR. It can process both mono and stereo, so uh, I will stay in mono because we have only one track. The second option is target type, where we can choose band pass or high pass. I assume this is a feature that lets you DS the whole high end or just a certain band. The monitor will probably let you listen to the sibilants only. With frequency, you choose which frequency uh, you'd like to DS. Then we have the bandwidth in octaves, which is probably the area around this frequency we choose right here, uh, where the DSing will take place. Most obviously, as in any other compressor, threshold which will let you set how much of the signal you want to DS, and the ratio, so the strength of the DSing. There is also time constants, uh, which is probably the release of the DSer, since we have those hours and milliseconds right here and the gain so you can make uh, the audio coming out of this DSR louder. This DSR is pretty complicated for a beginner in my opinion but let's try to tune that thing. I will be tweaking uh, inside the DSR and then I will explain what I did. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. Okay, so as you could see, I changed the frequency, so those lower frequencies below uh, 5500 hertz aren't affected by the DSR. And I've changed the threshold, so it actually starts DSing. That's where you set the uh, moment where the DSing starts happening. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. So now we've heard only the part of the spectrum affected by uh, the DSer. If we have changed the frequency back to uh, 4000 Hz, we would just hear more of the spectrum, but I don't want those middle frequencies to be affected by the DSer. And here on this meter, you are seeing how much of the signal is getting compressed while the DSing is happening. So as you could see, we were compressing about 3 dB of the signal above 5.5K um, on the spectrum with a 4 to 1 ratio, and here's the threshold. It's pretty simple as you understand it, but for a beginner, this compressor, as I told you, is not that easy to understand, I think. And here we go back to Spitfish, this really, really simple plugin 
that you can download for free. The sense knob right here is just the threshold and the depth is just the strength uh, of, of the async, so it's ratio. Here you also have the tune knob which lets you choose the frequency you want to DS on. You also have the soft button which makes the compression knee a little softer so it's not as hard. You can bypass so you can basically turn off the DSer and listen if it works. You have the stereo button which lets you process a stereo signal and you have a really important listen button which lets you listen to the sibilance uh, affected by the DSer only, which I will show you in just a minute. Okay, so now I will set up Spitfish and I will tell you what I did. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. Okay, it's done. So, first of all, I've set up the sense knob, so the threshold right here, so it reacts only when the sibilant is happening. So as you could see, it was blinking only when the S was happening in the recording. Then I've set up the depth of the DS thing, so the sibilants were quieter, but not too quiet. And then I've tuned it precisely uh, with this knob right here. Right now it's probably around 5000 Hz or something. And now I'll turn on the listen button right here, and you will be able to hear the sibilants only. Let's have a listen. I think you've heard those S's uh, really clearly. And the final DS recording sounds like that. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. My DSR of choice is this built in into Isotope Nectar. It's really simple. You just choose the bandwidth. You just uh, set the threshold. You can listen to the DS frequencies and that's really it. I'm planning to make more videos about Isotope plugins in the future. So let me know what do you think about that idea in the comment section down below. Those are really good plugins and really simple to use. They aren't cheap, but you can buy them on Splice and pay like uh, $30 each month and they are just out of the space for me. Let's just set up this uh, DS real quick. So around 5, 6k. I am a slimy snake covered in sludge sliding into the dungeon. I am a slimy snake covered You can hear those sibilants. It's the simplest DSR I've been using uh, and it's really effective. I don't have to worry about any ratios and stuff. It's just does its job and that's the best thing about it. So now you should be a master of DSync. I hope this video helped you. If you want more videos like that, hit the thumbs up, uh, subscribe the channel with all the notifications so you won't miss any new tutorials and my videos. If you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me uh, about Reaper, about music production, mixing and mastering, hit me up uh, and check the offer on my website. Uh, the link's also in the description down below. See you on Friday with another cook-up tutorial. My name is Dominic, you've been watching Vozo Beats and keep the good vibes alive.